back from Brighton. So yeah, got back from Brighton on uh, Wednesday night, quite late Wednesday. And um, yeah, when I got back, it was a nice little surprise. Let's go to the office. So for those of you who watch a lot of my videos and know anything about drones, you'll know that I've got one of these. Um, this is the DJI Phantom 4, um, which is absolutely awesome, so good. Like the quality of the footage is just amazing. The drone just flies so well. Like it can be flown in like so many different conditions and it just does such an amazing job for the aerial shots of the vlogs. The only problem is, it's flipping massive. It is pretty big, which is kind of like a good thing because you know, when you're flying in wind and stuff, you don't want something so small that it's just gonna get blown away. Like it's got proper presence in the air, like you know it's coming and it's it's quite noisy as well. But it is like a semi-professional drone. The other thing is, this is the backpack you need to carry it around in. It's not the most practical thing in the world. I mean, I've taken this on flights before and it's been absolutely fine, but you pretty much get the drone and a laptop and some other little bits and pieces in there, and that's about it, that's your hand luggage. So when DJI, one of their um, keynotes last year, announced they were gonna be um, making a new drone, which is gonna be really, really small, compact, um, fits in the tiniest of bags, can go basically anywhere with anyone, and can be just controlled with a smartphone on its own. I got pretty excited about that, and I thought, I wonder if they can actually pull it off. After that, lots of videos came out, like of sample versions, like on Casey Neistat's vlogs and, and all these other like tech review places which got early sample. Like anything in the tech world that's like brand new and like really, really exciting, there was so much hype over it. And from a marketing perspective, they got it absolutely bang on. But from a consumer's perspective, it was gonna be a nightmare to get hold of one of these things, I could just tell straight away. So a few weeks ago I thought, do you know what, I'll just go on the DJI store um, and just order one directly and it'll just come when it comes. At least I'll be in the queue and I'll get one at some point. And to my surprise, two days ago it turned up. So I ordered this on the 21st of January and it turned up on, yesterday was the second, turned up on the first. So that's pretty impressive, seems that on all the other websites like Maplins and all the other kind of drone specialist stores, they're saying like, even Apple is saying like three months. Let's just check that, eight to 10 weeks. Eight to 10 weeks, that's crazy. So it's like DJI have just completely gone behind like the whole supply chain's back and just started selling these direct out of China. More profit, I suppose. So long story short, if you want a Mavic Pro really, really quickly, just go to the DJI store and just order there because I think you're gonna get it a lot quicker than anywhere else. Right, enough of that, it's here now anyway, so you wanna see it, right? This is the bag that it comes in. Well, this is actually like an optional extra, this bag, but basically this is the bag that you store the drone in. And inside here is the drone, the controller, two batteries, and all the other wires and bits and pieces, chargers, all that stuff, it's all in that. So you ready for this guys? Here's the drone itself. It's all folded up and then you basically unfold it like this. And that is the Mavic Pro. Unbelievable, isn't it? This is the controller. Looks more like some sort of PlayStation portable than a drone controller. But when I first saw pictures of this, I was thinking, uh, I don't know if it actually looks Good, it looked a little bit kind of toy like, but this thing, I mean, the weight of it is just, it's not heavy, but it's just, it's the right weight. Like it feels really, really good quality. And this is one of the things I absolutely love about this drone is this controller, because this screen on here, you can see here, I won't turn it on just yet, but it's like all the readout for the drone that you'd normally have on your phone screen. It doesn't replace the phone because the smartphone goes in the bottom. These two things flip out and then you put your phone actually in the bottom of it. Um, let's do that now and I'll show you. So here's the controller, how cool is that? And I've got my iPhone 7 Plus in the bottom. So you've got all your readouts on here, like your altitude, your speed, um, just general sort of status messages, really important stuff. Um, and then you can, you can actually flick this screen so that the whole screen becomes um, the, the video which is really, really nice. So you're just using that entire screen of the phone for just video and then all your telemetry data is actually on this screen. It's just absolutely awesome. But these sticks though, guys, these sticks are so, so high quality. I can't even tell you how good they actually feel. I mean, it looks like something completely futuristic. I absolutely love it. So back to the drone itself, you've got obviously your camera at the front with the gimbal. You've got folding propellers on here as well, obviously, because of like it also, it folds out. 
into the bag like really nicely. So the battery's on the top, you just press that little button and those lights light up to show you um, your battery level. Um, I think the flight time's about the same as the Phantom 4, like 25, 26 minutes, um, but it's obviously a smaller drone with a smaller battery, so um, because it's lighter, it can, it, can, it can deal with a smaller battery, I suppose. You've got all your sensors and stuff on the bottom, um, which is really, really cool. The accuracy for landing, return to home, is supposed to be really, really good, because I think these little cameras here take a picture of the actual ground when it takes off, so that it knows where to come back to. It's just absolutely incredible. There's a little cover around here, which has basically got your SD card and your, um, your there's a switch here which allows you to switch between um, the actual controller using the controller to control it like normal or you can actually control it by the phone on its own so you don't even need the controller and the range is limited obviously because it's only doing it by Wi-Fi but you can literally just I don't know you could just use it to take a selfie just with your phone I mean I think that's going to be really cool for some of the shots I do where I'm on the skateboard or like I'm on the bike and it's always a nightmare to have this massive great Phantom 4 controller um, and you can't control the drone whilst you're actually you know on a bike or doing something like that but with a phone you could just literally just tell the drone to follow you and put your phone in your pocket and you could be no more disasters that way. Right so I had a little fly last night um, nothing crazy just like outside just quickly up and down just to test everything was kind of working. But the first thing I noticed about it was it's actually very, very quiet. Um, you know, it's not like your normal kind of buzzing drone. It's actually pretty quiet. I mean, you still know it's there, obviously, but that's the first thing I noticed. It's, it's a lot quieter than the other drones. And the other thing as well, it was quite breezy when I was outside and it just handled it absolutely fine. It just stayed in exactly the same position for the entire hover that I was doing. I mean, yeah, pretty, pretty amazing stuff. Anyway, the weather was pretty good today, but um, it's clouding over a little bit now. But anyway, I'm gonna go outside and um, yeah, show you how it flies. Right, it's ready to go. One thing I noticed is obviously, because there isn't really a massive landing gear, when you're taking off on grass, the actual camera is touching the grass, so you've got to watch that a little bit. I'm not going to any fields or anything, because I'm just gonna do a little, little quick little test here. But um, yeah, let's go. I don't know if you can see how stable that is, but there's a little bit of a breeze, but... but the app's making like a little bleeping sound where it's, um, I suppose it's just focusing. I think I prefer this controller to the Phantom 4 one. It's just really, really smooth and nice. It's, it's really precise as well. I just tried to flick to sport mode, but it wouldn't let me in the app. So I just had to go into the app and, uh, and set it. But there you go, you can see GPS mode. Um, some really good information there as well. You've got motor RPM, um, distance away from your height, obviously, clearance, ground clearance, um, battery level of the drone, obviously, like before, GPS signal, speed. It's kind of um, a bit like a sort of car speed, though. So cool. Right, so I'm going into sport mode now. Let's give it some full throttle. It's got some serious climb rate. 
I've got a warning now, it says too high wind velocity, so I think we better bring it down a little bit. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> the warning's gone away now. Never got that warning with the Phantom 4 though. Let's try a little uh, short range test. Crikey, that is fast. Only on like 66 percent battery so that's pretty good let's try some circuits driving it is so good so there you go guys first little test flight with the mavic it is so good it's so responsive and like nimble um i don't know it's like it feels less scary than flying the phantom 4 as well because the phantom 4 is a lot bigger you know that you know it's probably going to make more of a dent if it hits something um but i don't know it just feels really nimble and really quick the speed of it though like on sport mode it is just that's quick really quick the, the funny thing, I was getting those kind of wind um, warnings, like it was saying like, I oh, am wind velocity too high. So yeah, I wonder, it's probably not gonna be as good as the bigger drones for like, you know, facing massive kind of gusts of wind. I've never seen that on the uh, on the Phantom 4 before. It's probably gonna be better if it's not, you know, not gusting. It didn't seem to affect it though. It's probably just a warning. It's probably just something to tell you, so that, you know, watch out because if a gust of wind comes, it might just knock it off course. So yeah, it's early days, but so far so good, really impressed with it. And the other thing is, the timing for this turning up is just absolutely perfect, um, because we're off to Finland tomorrow, um, and we're going to Helsinki, and then we're going to another place called Sariselka, which is probably pronounced completely wrong, but basically it's like Lapland. It's 250 kilometers away from the Arctic Circle. It's gonna be so, so cool. And um, now I'll be able to get some really, really good shots without having to take that massive great backpack with me. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the video about the Mavic Pro. It's just such an awesome bit of kit. If you want to get one, just 100%, just order it through the DJI store and you're just going to get it so much quicker. Um, but yeah, I feel like this drone is just so much more versatile than the other ones because it's just small, like it can go more places and I just feel like we're going to capture some serious footage with this little drone. Anyway, next time I see you, or next time you see me, I'll be in Finland. So stay tuned for that. Catch you later, guys.